Have you ever had cheesecake crack, sink, overbake, underbake, leak water? I've been there. That's why I've tested this recipe over 50 times to make it perfect. Let's get started. My favorite part about a cheesecake is the crust. So let me show you how to make a delicious crust that's not soggy. Here I have half a stick of butter and I'm just gonna unwrap it. I'm gonna save the wrapper for later because I'll grease my pan with it. Let's pop this in the microwave. I'm gonna start at about 30 seconds and see how melted it gets by then. You can see that some parts are still a little unmelted. I'm just gonna swirl it and then maybe for another 10 seconds or so. All right, the butter is nice and melted, so I'm just gonna place it in this larger bowl. Here I have some crushed graham crackers. You can buy pre-crushed graham crackers, or you can just do it yourself if you have the sheets of graham crackers. Just put it in a plastic bag and roll over it with a rolling pin. And then the last thing is a little bit of sugar for sweetness. We're just gonna mix that up. You want the graham crackers to be fine so that you'll have a nice, even crust. Once it comes together, it'll start looking a little bit like wet sand. And when you press into it, you can see that it keeps its shape and packs together. All right, so this is gonna be perfect. We're gonna put it right into our spring form pan. But let me talk to you a little bit about the pans. So not only did I test the techniques and the ingredients, but I also tested out a bunch of pans for you guys. And you'll see that they all have slight differences. So this one has a really like flat bottom, and then I'll show you when I unbuckle it that the surface is flat and then you know it kind of edges off but some of the other ones are a little bit different so this one you'll notice that it's flat but then there's like a ring around it like a lip that kind of is raised that makes it really difficult to move your cheesecake and even slice into it because this will kind of get in the way of your knife and then this one it has a flat surface but it also has like this quilted pattern to it as long as it's not like too drastic it's fine but when you try to move your cheesecake remember that there's like these graham crackers on the bottom so as it slides off, you can kind of like shift those and it can break the crumbs. If you don't have a spring pan already and you're gonna get one, I definitely suggest getting one that's smooth, flat, and kind of edges off on the sides. One last thing you wanna keep in mind is that you wanna avoid the dark nonstick pans. Dark pans always conduct heat faster than you want. And one thing that's really important about the cheesecake is you want it to bake slowly and evenly. If you use dark ones, it'll kind of brown around the edges a little bit too fast and cook the outside faster than the inside. So always try to stick to light colored pans. And obviously it has to be a spring form pan, not a regular cake pan. All right, let's get our crust in. But before we do that, we wanna grease it. And remember I told you to save the wrapper of the butter. We can just use what's on there to grease our pan. Make sure you get the inside corners and everything as well. So here is our mixture. I'm just gonna pour it all right in. Then I'm just gonna shake it so that it kind of gets to an even level. What I wanna do now is I wanna grab like the back of a flat cup or even this measuring cup is really great. And I'm gonna start pressing that crust down. I'm packing in these graham crackers pretty firmly so that the crust is stable. And I'm just creating one flat layer. Now, some people like the crust to go up the sides, but this is just, you know, one last step and it's easier. <laughs> so I'm just gonna, you know, take my finger and run it around the sides to get any crumbs off. Otherwise, it will be on the side of your cheesecake. So we're gonna bake it so that we have that nice crispy crust and it's gonna go in the oven for about 10 minutes and then we'll let it cool all right the crust is fully baked you can see that it has a nice golden color and it's really important that we let this completely cool before we put in our filling so I'm just gonna let it kind of chill out here let's talk about the ingredients that go in cheesecake there's only five it's super simple but there's some things to keep in mind you want everything to be full fat and then everything needs to be at room temperature so we can blend it all nicely first thing is the cream cheese I'm just gonna beat it until there's no lumps one thing about cheesecake is we don't want to incorporate too much air in any step of the process. So I'm just gonna put it on a real low speed and give it a few minutes. While this is creamy, I'm gonna start boiling some water for our water bath. All right, so this is looking nice and soft. Now we're gonna add in some of our other ingredients. So we have some sugar that needs to go in. We're gonna give that a little bit of a mix. Adding the sour cream will add additional tanginess, creaminess, and body to our overall cheesecake. Now at this point, I wanna make sure that everything on the side is incorporated. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna scrape everything down and give it another mix. I need a tablespoon of vanilla. Now for our last ingredient. And I purposely kept this as a 
last part to put in because we don't want to over mix the batter. I have four eggs right here. To prevent over mixing even more, I'm going to take another precaution and I'm just going to take a fork and beat these. Because if you don't beat them, you're going to have to mix them longer for it to get incorporated into the batter. And as with any time you add an egg to a batter, we don't want to like dump this whole thing in because it'll really overwhelm the batter. So I'm going to add them in one by one. Wait to add in the additional eggs after the one in there is already fully incorporated. Keep the mixer on low while you do this and the eggs will kind of give us like that nice structure to the cake. All right, this looks good. Look at that nice creamy batter. Now comes my favorite part. You guys are going to love this. We are going to bang this bowl on the counter to get all the air bubbles out. Now, it's important to do it while it's in the bowl, not in the cake pan, because remember, we have that crust on the bottom. As you do this, you'll see that the bubbles pop and they're all like coming to the surface. So just keep doing it a couple more times until it kind of slows down. Our crust has completely cooled and now we're going to prepare it. So this is probably the most crucial step, because if you don't get this part right, you might ruin your cheesecake. My secret tip is an oven bag. An oven bag is typically used for meats like turkey. It's really easy to find and it's usually right next to the foil. I know a lot of people just, you know, wrap the spring form pan with foil so that the water doesn't get in, but sometimes it does get in. <laughs> this oven bag is really gonna give us pretty much like 100% guarantee that the water won't get in. So I'm just gonna open it up and I'm gonna place my pan right in. And make sure that it's all the way down on the bottom. And then whatever you have extra, just kind of fold it over the sides. We're still gonna use the foil just to kind of secure this bag. You wanna make sure that your foil exceeds the size of the pan. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna bring in all that foil to kind of secure this plastic. And again, try to stay under the lip of the pan. So once you have that generally round, now you just wanna really secure it. So go ahead and firmly press the whole thing. So now you have the foil and the oven bag to kind of protect any water from seeping into your spring form. Our batter is ready, but as it sits, even for a couple minutes, it may have developed more air bubbles. So you can go ahead and tap it a few more times. Right, so I'm just gonna put it right in the center and just let it flow. You see that this made a lot of batter and as it bakes, it will kind of puff up and exceed uh, the sides, but then as it cools, it'll settle back down. So don't worry about it looking too full. This is the perfect amount for this nine inch spring form. So this is gonna bake in a water bath. So we're gonna need a roasting pan and you want it to have a little bit of height because we are gonna fill it with about two inches of water. You're gonna pour the water into this roasting pan once it's in the oven because it's, you know, like a safety measure. You don't want hot water kind of sloshing around while you try to put it in the oven. So place this in the bottom rack of the oven or just like a lower rack if you can. Once it's in there, we're gonna take our boiling water and just on the corner, gently start pouring it in. We're gonna close the door. The oven is set to 325 and we're gonna leave it in there for about an hour and a half. After the cake bakes for about an hour and a half, we're gonna turn off the oven. But I wanna show you what it looks like at that point. See how when I tap it, the edges look a little bit set, but the center will jiggle like jello. Just make sure it doesn't wiggle like water. Remember, jiggle like jello. And it might look underdone to you, but don't worry. All you have to do is turn off the oven, keep the door closed, and just walk away for two hours. This looks perfect. This has cooled in the oven. Now we're gonna let this sit at room temp for another two hours. She's really mm. fragile, so we want it to slowly cool down. We don't want any big temperature differences. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna grab this put it on a cooling rack, and now I'm just gonna leave this for two hours. So it's been about two hours, and you can see that when I shake it, it's already firmed up, but we really wanna let it rest overnight in the fridge so it could fully set. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna take off all of this, grab the cake. You can see that there's little to no water. If you see any little bits of water, it's fine. It's probably condensation while it was cooling. So now we can just put this in the fridge overnight, and we'll see it again tomorrow. All right, I made one already last night and I can't wait to see it. So all you have to do is unbuckle the ring, lift it up. There you go. Look at how beautiful it is. It came out so nice. It's even, the sides came out beautifully. It's perfect. I'm gonna move it onto this platter and you wanna do this carefully. You can kind of shift it with your hands and it should kind of slide right off. But if you feel any resistance, you can take a small offset and kind of get under the crust in between the crust and the pan and run it around. I wanna keep whatever surface you're gonna put it on pretty level with the cake itself. And then you could just literally take your hand and shift it over. 
So excited. All right, so here I have a knife sitting in warm water. This is gonna help make really clean cuts. So before you actually go to cut it, make sure to wipe off any of that water. All right, and let's go in. Nice and slow. So before you make your second cut, make sure to wipe off your knife and warm it up again. Okay, and we are ready for the reveal. Yay, it looks so good. I'm so excited to dig into this cheesecake. We put so much love into it and now it's ready to eat. So we're just gonna top it with something and I personally really love cherries. Now I like to use this cherry pie filling. It's just from a can, but there's something super nostalgic about the taste of it on cheesecake. It's just a classic pairing. So I'm gonna put this right on top. If you wanna put anything else, you definitely can feel free to. Oh my gosh, it's gorgeous and perfect. All the time we spent on it is gonna be so worth it. We've waited long enough, let's dig in. I don't even know what to say, like I'm speechless. It's just so creamy, delicious, luxurious, amazing. You have to make this. I spent so much time testing these recipes. I promise it'll work for you exactly like it did here if you follow my steps. If you guys make it, tag me, I'd love to see it. Something fell. 